Well, let's go back in time and talk a little bit about a story that instigated your passion for cars. Is there a pivotal moment when you realized that you were indeed a car guy? Probably when I was a kid, maybe middle school, when I was picking up uh, remote control cars. You know, and I was picking up the cars where you actually had to build them Mm -hmm. and put your own motors in them, your own suspensions, your own radio gear, all that sort of thing. And I was building them with my father back then. And even at the time, my grandfather, my dad's dad. And I guess we got some handy guys in our family, you know, Uh, I'm the only boy, but, uh, you know, it's uh, we started tinkering back then. So I always had an interest and my dad was always into old cars. Uh So even when I was a kid, but I never really dove into a car, an everyday car or, or anything like that until about college time when I got my first Beetle. So from there, I mean, that was another pivot right there. Absolutely. Very cool. Well, Chris, what I'd love to do is take a look at some of the roads and journeys you've taken in your life and your career and talk about a huge challenge or a big failure that you faced along the way. Most importantly, I want to know how you overcame that situation. What did it teach you so you could move forward? So uh, tell us about that experience and tell us how it helped you gain even more momentum in your business or your career. Sure. Uh, I guess because I was an artist at heart first. I knew nothing about business. Hmm. So I didn't know anything about sheer numbers, dollar in, dollar out every month, budgeting, things like that. So when I first started the business, all I really calculated was, you know, what I purchased the car for, what I painted it for, and then how much I, uh, what parts Mm -hmm. uh, I I put into it. I never really calculated my hours Hmm. and the time it takes to put these together. So when we were doing this out of the one car garage, I didn't really have any overhead. So when it came down to numbers like that, I, I was kind of inexperienced. So when people started calling me, seeing my cars going up on eBay and telling me, I, I don't want to bid on your cars. I want you to build me a bug. Ah, okay. And that was about after a year I started uh, you know, doing them out of my father's garage. Yeah. That's when I knew, okay, this is kind of, I got to really look into this now. Right. I had to grow over time. So I was, you know, many times I underestimated how long the car would take to get done. So, I mean, that happens. It's still common today. But now I got a better grasp on things and now I'm really monitoring things in and out. So, you know, you start to learn when you make those mistakes when, yeah, I didn't make much money, if at all, any money right. on, that, <laughs> on that car. Right, exactly. Well, what's a good takeaway for those people out there that, because this is a pretty common thought with artists, especially builders of cars, because it always takes so much more time. Are there some resources or places that you went to kind of help you understand the business side of restoring cars? Um, You know, I guess, you know, there's so many shows on TV. You can grab little tidbits from them. There was times, you know, you can look on YouTube even, but even times I would call some shops that are out there. Mm-hmm. And if they were friendly enough to, to give me some insight, uh, yeah. that's what I do. And in the very beginning, when I was looking into, you know, building for people, you know, I hit up a handful of the shops that are all across the country that do Volkswagen restoration and uh, gave me a general idea of where to start uh, yeah. and, and, and really where to you know, position myself so I wouldn't come off as a, you know, an inexperienced businessman. Yeah, that's what I did. Well, you know, that's a great lesson there for listeners out there is reach out to other professionals. That's the best and fastest way many times you can learn things. And if they're kind enough to share their information with you, which a lot of people are, especially in the automotive industry, then it can help you move forward. But yeah, that's why when people go to have their cars restored at great shops and they go, it's going to cost how much? Right. All you have to do is say, well, look, these are the hours that have to go into it. Each of these people and all these processes, not just the car itself and the paint that lays down, it's all the hours that goes into prepping. So um, it kind of surprises people sometimes, I think. Many, many times. I mean, most people that do call us that want to build, um, you know, when I break it down for them, I mean, there's still people that think, you know, they can get a bug completed for, you know, 10, 15,000. And I said, well, if you want to do it yourself. Yeah, <laughs> good you know, luck. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's what you have to do. I mean, I, I, you know, there's no way I can. No, of course not. Not if you're going to do it right. Absolutely. I think some of these TV shows, the reality shows have really confused maybe a novice because they go, well, they built that car in a week. Right. Uh, yeah. No. Not I, really. Yeah. No. Yep. There's <laughs> a lot of discrepancies there. So I tell that people that all the time. I mean, we're, we're over a two year wait list here. Oh, you know, wonderful. And I, I, I tell people that, you know, it's I probably if you signed on to me today, I probably wouldn't be able to get to you until next year. And then from there, figure within a year's time, I can have the car done for you. Wow. Well, time to hire some more people then expand that business. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's great to hear. Well, Chris, let's shift gears and go to the other end of the spectrum. I'd love for you to share what I call a career aha moment. You kind of alluded to one there when you decided to sell a car to kind of pay for some of your film activities. But is there a specific time when those headlights came on and illuminated a new path for you in your business or your career? And tell us the steps you took to turn that aha moment into a success. 
Yes, when we got the cease and desist letters in that gated community where we were doing the work, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the big aha moment. We found a 54 Beetle uh, in the area that somebody uh, you know tipped me off on, and we went to go see it, and we grabbed it for 500 bucks. And you know, this thing was four flat tires, but it, it was a beautiful black uh, original car with the red interior, and mm. you know, we put that car together from you know body off, paint, body, uh, you know, interiors and everything. And I said to myself, you know. Let's throw it up on eBay and see how it does. Yeah. If this car sells, then it's time for me to get out of here. This is the real deal, and yeah. I got to get a shop. And uh, we sold that car on eBay in two days. I had to buy it now on it. It was gone. Nice. Um, and uh, I think the guy who then owned it was uh, Billy Joel Armstrong from uh, Green Day. Oh, really? Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Nice. He wound up picking that up, and I said to my dad, and that was right at the time when we got the letter in from the homeowners association <laughs> yeah. to say you got to stop ripping motors out of the garage and you know yeah. get yeah. going. So it was perfect timing. Yeah. Well, there's always that point in time with a business where you have to become real, uh, yes. quote unquote, and you got to kind of bite the bullet and find an office and move into it or a building or a shop and that kind of thing. So um, that put kind of pushes you out of the nest to uh, make your business a real deal. So very no cool. Well, I would assume you've had many proud moments in your business because you've made a lot of people so happy with the cars they purchase from you or cars you restore for them. Is there one proudest moment that you could share with us? Uh, yeah, getting a call from Jerry Seinfeld. Well, that was nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, from being a fan of somebody uh -huh. um, that you know basically feels you know someone like me, an average guy, to reach out to somebody like that is almost un unthinkable or unreachable. For him to call me and while I'm driving in my car and I'm like, no way. Yeah, who's this? Come on, Ma. Is this you? Exactly. <laughs> My dad told me, you better pull over now because we're heading into a dead spot. So if that cell tower kicks off, you're in bad trouble. Yeah, big don't hang up on Jerry when he talks. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that was, a, that was a nice thing. I mean, he would, for one of the things he – he really liked about me was seeing the passion he saw in me and my YouTube videos. So, you know, I do a video a week on YouTube. Nice. Yeah. You know, I think it gets out there and I get in front of the camera. You know, I'm comfortable in front of the camera. So right. I'm communicating with people on a, on a down to earth level. Fantastic. Now, you worked on a 56 oval window? Correct. Yeah. For him? Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Well, he's a guy I'd love to have on this show. He's a hard guy to find and get to. That's for sure. He's got a lot of walls around him, but maybe maybe yes. someday he'll come and be a guest. I know that he loves talking cars, so uh, maybe I'll land him sometime. But congratulations for that. That's pretty cool. Obviously, that helped uh, springboard you to other clients and things, and having him as a client uh, reference material is uh, certainly sure. an awesome thing. Well, yep. let's have a little bit of fun and go back in time again. You you talked a little bit about uh, that first bug, but what was your first really special vehicle? And maybe you could share a memory you have of that car. Yeah, probably that car, that first car from college, the okay. 71 Super Beetle Convertible. Mm -hmm. And that was the time where I said to my dad, I got enough money saved up. I want my own car. Because my parents, they gave me a hand-me-down. It was a 87 Crown Victoria had battering ram. That, <laughs> yeah. uh, the I Crown did, Vic. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, and I said to myself, I can't be going to school on this yeah. thing. This is, I, I'm not picking up girls with this. So. Not going to work. No, not going to work. Yeah, well, that's yeah. pretty cool. I, I mentioned to you and my listeners know that uh, one of my very – my second car I ever owned was a 67 Gia. Just love that yeah. car. Did a lot of restoration work on it and drove it for a long time all the way through college and – my sister had a 73 bug that I helped her fix and work on and things. So I share some of that old VW air-cooled passion with you. And sure. My neighbor across the street, Bruce, he has a beautiful 58 bug that's kind of a gray, dark gray color with a red interior. And mm -hmm. every time I'm sitting here and watch him pull out, I would just want to run out and go, take me for a ride. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. That's it. I'm telling you. It's uh, that first car. That's the car I cut my teeth on. You know, basically, okay. I, yeah. I, I said, you know, it, it was all I and, you know, back then it was in the late 90s where you still looked up in the newspaper to find a, a you know, a used car. And I found a little close in you know, a local classified and uh, I went and saw it. And yeah, it was fire engine red with the white top, white walls. And I was I was gaga over it. Oh, yeah. And uh, but I, I, you know, since I didn't know anything about the car, I didn't know where to look. I didn't know, you know, the, the, the crucial rust points and yeah, things like that. Yeah. So on that, uh, that car had had a, Whatever went wrong with it was supposed to go wrong with a Beetle did happen on that Beetle. So I blew the motor. <laughs> Learning curves. <laughs> Absolutely. It was rusty. You know, the doors didn't want to shut right, you know, things yeah. like that. But I, I wound up restoring that car and I actually owned that car for eight years. Wow. And that was the longest I've ever owned a Beetle. 
Wow. So ever since then, you know, it, it's the, with the business, I don't think I've held on to a Beetle for more than maybe two or three years. Oh, gosh. Wow. <laughs> Very nice. Well, how about seller's remorse uh, with cars you've let go? Is there one in particular you wish you had back and you hadn't sold? Yeah, I mean, that changes over time. The more, you know, I keep doing these cars because you always get better over time. Sure. But there is one in particular that I really, I, I mean, there's a few. <laughs> uh -huh. There's this one in particular I keep going back to, and it was a 54 ragtop that I bought, uh, I'd say maybe three or four years ago. The, actually, the car found me. The guy called me up at, out of Pennsylvania, and it was a rock solid car, straight car, straight as can be. I mean, it just, you just don't find a rock solid 54 oval ragtop wow. in the Northeast. And, you know, never been in an accident. And you can oh, tell the wow. car was in the garage for about 30 years. Yeah, okay. And bought that car, and we restored it from top to bottom. I mean, I don't think there was a flaw on the car after I finished it. And, you know, usually when you restore a car, there's always something. Uh, I scratched the nick defender. Or, you know, I, that, that bolt is frozen in there. It doesn't want to come out. Whatever the case may be. But this car, it, it just came apart so beautifully and went together so beautifully. And it was the first car that I shipped to Florida to be part of a VW show down there. Uh -huh. It was just a beautiful thing to open that ragtop and see palm trees through my roof. <laughs> yes. You know, <laughs> no I never did I never did that before and I said to myself, this is a you know, a great opportunity. I just got it was beautiful and it was in the middle of January, February. Oh, yeah. uh, so I was getting out of New York and going to the warm weather and it was just a beautiful thing. And I wound up selling that car to London. Oh wow. A guy in London, yeah. So but every time I have on my screensaver going on on my computer, I see that car flash up on the screen. Oh, every yeah. And I'm like, man, look at that baby, you know? <laughs> yeah, nice memories, nice memories. Very cool. Uh -huh. <laughs>